be of service to God until I write myself up, until I am right with people, until I am good, I am considered a good person, until I stop doing what I'm doing. But you know, some people would even say, oh, I can't go to your church, I can't go to your life group because I have to be a good person first. But you can't be a good person first by your own strength. You need God to change you. You need God. You need to be all in with the Lord so that that change can happen, can occur in your life. I'm telling you that the enemy is lying to you, telling you that you must cleanse yourself. No. God says, I accept you, who you are, where you are, how you are. Come as you are. That's how Jesus sees us. God is always close to us, as close as the breath, air that we breathe. And anyone who desires to have an encounter with Him, anyone who desires to come close to Him, can do so. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 to 8 says, Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. God is always ready and willing. He's always there. We just need to ask. Sa Tagalog, ang humihingi ay tumatanggap. If you don't ask, you won't receive. If you remember the Lord's Prayer, it says there, give us this day our daily bread. You're asking God to provide for you. Forgive us our sins. You're asking God to forgive you. It's in that Lord's Prayer. The Lord taught us how to pray, and that's how we pray. For example, in that wedding suite, if that husband never asked the concierge to say about the door or about where that room was, he would not know how that he should open the door. He would not know that that room was there. We must ask. When you seek God, ask Him to be with you. Ask Him to guide you. Ask Him to forgive you. Ask Him to provide for you. We must always seek Him. Ang nagahanap ay nakakasumpong. Sabi nga sa ating ano, Tagalog, Salita ng Diyos, Bible. If you don't seek, you won't find. So, minsan sa atin, we're looking, but we don't really see. Right? Make, one say, sometimes you're, you're talking to somebody, you're looking, you think you're looking at that person, but he's, you're really looking, your mind is someplace else. You're looking, but you're not seeing. And that's not how we should be. God said, when you seek me, you will find me. Just like that husband and wife, when they were looking through that room, they were looking for the bed, but they were looking in the wrong place. They found it in the sofa. They found it, but it was the wrong bed. They should have looking, been looking in the other side. This is also in the Lord's Prayer. Seek me. God says, may your kingdom come. May your will be done. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Then finally it says, knock. Ang kumatok ay pinagbubuksan. If you don't knock, it will not be opened. Again, in the Lord's Prayer it says, lead us not into temptation. He's knocking on God's heart. Cover me in your protection. Deliver us from evil. You know, when you knock on a door and it's open and you go in, then you shut that door, you're with the Lord, that evil, that temptation cannot affect you anymore. Amen? You have always, you have the way out. God is guiding you to always have the way out. We just need to be just like those two couples, opening that door. And you have to step in. You don't just open it. Oh, sometimes some of us see that, oh, yeah, God is good and, and He's great for those guys, right? Or maybe we see Him like, oh, yeah, you guys are blessed because you're serving God. No. We're serving God because He loved us first. We're not serving Him because we want the blessing. The blessing is just a bonus. We're serving Him because He gave His life for us. Just like people open that door, they see this beautiful suite. They want to walk in. But until you walk in, you won't experience Him. 
Amen? To live a life constantly in the presence of God, you need to have a personal encounter. It's not enough that you see other people come to the Lord. It's not enough that you see other people experience Him. It's not enough that you see miracles, signs, and wonders in other places, on TV, or with, even with people here. When they share their testimony, you'll be amazed at what God is doing in people's lives. You yourself must experience it because Jesus, God, is a personal Savior. Hallelujah. As we continue to desire to live a life constantly in the presence of God, we must also have a personal reconciliation through Jesus. On the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus pulled aside his disciples. He gave them a list of what he expected his disciples to be. A couple of weeks ago, we learned about having a poor in spirit, being poor in spirit. This allows us to experience God's presence in our life, having a brokenness towards God, as well as a promise for eternity. The second command, the second beatitude says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. I'm like, what does have... What does mourning have to do with anything? Like, don't you mourn when somebody dies, right? The condition of those who follow Jesus is not only to be broken before God, but also to be mournful. When you study this word, mourn or mournful, it actually comes from the, excuse me, Greek word, pantheo. It's Tagalog, nahahapis, which means to feel great sadness or to show great sadness when someone has died or to feel or show great sadness or unhappiness about something or someone. Typically, we mourn somebody when we lose, when we lose them. I remember when one of my daughters uh, was about four years old. She had this buddy, the dinosaur, the orange one that she loved, and she took it everywhere she went, and she would play with it everywhere she went. Uh, She slept with it, she ate with it, she played with it. She even takes a bath with it, you know. So finally, it just came to a point where it was just tattered and broken and and had to throw it out. When we threw it out, she was crying. She couldn't find it. She was crying. It's like she lost the most important thing in her life. She was in mourning over something. She was in mourning. And she was inconsolable. Some, you know... That's the kind of mourning that God wants us to have. But not towards things and not towards people, but towards our sin. We must mourn towards our sin. When Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn, he's telling his disciples to have the attitude of feeling or showing great sadness or great unhappiness toward their sin. Sometimes we, we love sin so much, like, you know. Yeah, Lord, I'll give you some of this sin that's done. I'm done with that. I can get over that. But this one I'll keep for myself. I'm not ready to let go. But God said, all in. If you want to experience him, we need to be all in. Don't hide something in your back pocket for later on. Give it all to God. Give it all to God. What is sin, though? What is sin? Sin simply means missing the mark. God has a certain standard that he calls us to be. And that's called holiness. Holiness can be only achieved through righteousness. Those are two different things. Holiness is the standard. Righteousness is how you achieve that standard. Being blameless or sinless. That's what righteousness means. But is any one of us blameless or sinless? The Word of God says in Romans chapter 3, 23, For everyone has what? Sinned. And we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Nobody can reach God's standards. Since we are sinful beings, we cannot be righteous or blameless by ourselves. We need God. If we are not righteous, then we cannot be holy. That means we cannot meet God's high standards. That means we cannot, under any circumstance, even in our best behavior, truly meet God's standard. And I myself must confess. I confess. I myself am a sinful being. 
I'm not yet perfect. We'll be perfected when Jesus comes and takes us with him. But as we live in this world, we are not yet perfect. But we are made perfect in Christ Jesus. Amen? When we trust him, when we believe him, we are made perfect through him. Without God's help, I cannot meet the standard that he has set according to his word. What should I do then? Now that I know that I cannot become righteous nor be holy by my own strength because of my sinfulness, I need to repent. We need to repent. To repent is to turn from sin and to dedicate oneself to the amendment of one's life. In other words, we must change our minds towards sin. We must not love sin anymore. Before, you're in sin, and now we turn away from it. Instead of running away from God, we run to God. God our Father is waiting for us to run back to Him. And just like the the parable of the prodigal son, we must realize that we are who we are before we can experience God's forgiveness. In Luke chapter 15, verses 18 to 19, This is the prodigal son talking to his dad. He said, I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and earth and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. That's the kind of remorse. That's the kind of mournful mourning that God wants. That you would realize that you are no longer worthy to become his son. But the next part where he says, just take me as your servant, That's not what God has planned for us. Amen? That's not what God has planned for us. The young man in this story decides not to stay in his fallen condition. That's the important part. Realize that we must change. We must stop being where we are. But to take a risk and find order in order to find a new opportunity. He recognizes his faults and sets out to return to his father to ask forgiveness. Likewise, we can have true reconciliation with God only when we acknowledge our sin. Sometimes we live like, you know, oh, you know, I, that's just a white lie. That's okay. That's just a pen. They have thousands more in the stock room. It's just a paper. I really need it for my house or my printer. I'm using it for God's glory anyway. I'm going to print the worship songs over here. I'm going to print the lessons over here. And I'm using the pen that I borrowed borrowed yesterday from work on my notebook that I borrowed from somebody else. Right? No. We must change our ways. Amen? We must change our ways. The Word of God says, if we confess our sins to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. We confess our sins to God. Directly. If you wronged somebody, then you also ask forgiveness with that person. But you go first straight to God. Ask Him for forgiveness. And when you confess and ask Him for forgiveness, the promise is He will forgive us. He will clean us. When we mourn for our sins and truly desire to turn away from it, then we can be called blessed. We are counted as one who is forgiven and refreshed. By God's grace. Blessed are those who mourn for their sins, for they will be comforted. You will no longer have to carry the burden of your sin. Comforted comes from the Greek word parakaleo, to encourage or to strengthen. Merriam Webster defines this as to cause someone to feel less worried, less upset, less frightened. Who wants to be in that boat? I want to be less worried, less upset, and less frightened. And that's what happens when you're in the Lord. When you trust Him and believe Him and know that you are forgiven. The enemy will come to you every single day, every single moment saying, Oh, look what you did. You can't be right with God because you did that. But God says, I already took that on the cross. Did you hear that? I already took that sin on the cross. Now you can stop doing it and turn to righteousness. By our own